Hey there everybody! I'm doing another mixed media painting today. I've got an 8 by 24 inch canvas. I'm really excited about today's painting because I've got some butterfly wings here for you. I've got them set aside. Hold on. Let me grab those. So I have three sort of earth tones butterflies here. I've got a polyphemus moth, which is this brown one. I've got a tiger swallowtail and a monarch. So these are all American butterflies that are local to where I live in West Virginia. On the back side of each wing, I've painted it white with some white house paint. Because when you set butterflies in paint, the wings can tend to go a little bit transparent. So if you paint the backs white, it'll give it the best chance at them keeping the color in the same way that they look when the wings are dry. So I prepped my wings with that. I am going to be setting these wings into the wet paint. That's how I do them with butterfly wings. But first I'm going to move them out of the way and go ahead and show you how I'm going to do the actual painting part. So I have some earth tones, kind of fall colors here. These are all mixed with Floetrol and water to about the consistency of a Dutch pour. It's quite thin. So I've got a white base here. You see how thin that is? It pretty much runs straight back into the cup. And you can watch this video of how I test the consistency for Dutch pours up here in this link that's popping up. So then I also have this light tan, which is actually a house paint that I then made a little bit lighter. I added some white but this is going to be a split base Dutch pour. For the rest of my colors, this is a burnt umber with some black added. So it's a very nice dark chocolate brown. And then I have this orange. I believe this one is called Harvest Orange. So it's nice and bright, but it's not neon. It's just a good fall orange. And then I've got this yellow, which is it's kind of a warm yellow, but not quite a marigold. Just a nice yellow. And then I have this um, metallic dark brown copper bronze kind of color. And then I have a little bit of metallic gold here as well, which was left over from another pour. And all of my colors, I did a drip test to help me check the consistency. So as you can see, they all drip down pretty well. And then I added a little bit of water to the yellow and the white. So let's move everything out of the way and then we can put down the base coat. So I'm putting the tan here in the center, kind of on a diagonal. And then the white is going to be at the top and bottom. So as I'm laying down these colors, I don't want a really, really big design here. I'm going to be blowing with my mouth because a blow dryer can, it just makes it crazy. Um, I want my butterflies in the negative space, one here, one here, one here. And so my design needs to be pretty small, not giant. So I'm going to be using my mouth to blow out the colors and I'm just going to be putting on very small amount of each one. So I'm starting here with that dark brown, the burnt umber and black. Next, I think I'll do this harvest orange. And I'm just adding a little bit because I don't want to have so much color that the design goes crazy. So you can always add more color, but it's hard to take it away. So I'm just adding a little bit. And so next I'm adding this metallic gold. 
Now I'm using the metallics in this because it creates a beautiful shimmery effect, but also because metallics can help create a cell reaction when you're not using silicone. So now I'm adding the yellow. And now some of this metallic bronze. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of more of the orange because I do want this to be kind of prominent. It's earth tones with that emphasis on the fall type look. So I want enough orange that it actually looks like fall. And now the metallic antique copper slash bronze. All right, this is a beautiful, I've got these nice, almost braided looking stripes. So now I'm gonna add some flow paint on each side of the colors, just so that I can move the paint around. If you don't add your flow paint, then the colors will not move across the canvas in the same way. So you just add a little bit of paint on each side of the base color, and that will help your colors to flow. And I'm going to blow my flow paint over the other colors with my blow dryer, and then I will blow out the design with my mouth. Okay, let's blow it out. So I'm really liking how this side is looking. Let me see if I can create the same type of design on this other side. I like mouth blowing a painting because it's kind of the perfect blend between using a straw, which is very small, and using a blow dryer, which is very big. So I've got two, two layers that both look good. They don't quite look the same. One is more feathery, one is more bold. They both look good. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more of some colors down here just to make it look a little bit bolder. So I've got some chocolate brown, some orange, and then just a little bit of this metallic copper. And we'll see if that can add a little bit more boldness to this one corner. I'll add a little bit more of the flow paint just to make sure that my colors can move. looking better. Let me just tweak a couple other areas. Now I'm using a torch to see if I can bring up any bubbles. Sometimes the torch will, will be able to create some cells in your paint and just add some details. All right, so I'm looking at this and I like it. I like the bold designs at the top. I also like the feathery designs at the bottom. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to set the butterfly wings in there. Just tweaking this one a little bit more. It's hard not to tweak. <laughs> and just keep doing it over and over and over again. There we go. That's looking a little better.
So now I'm using a straw for some kind of fine detail tweaks. Okay, so I'm really liking how this is looking. It's, it's very bright, it's, it's looking a lot like fall, where it's kind of wispy and muted, but with bright pops. Um, you know, we've got pops of dark, and we've got pops of orange, and we've got pops of metallic, and it's just, it's looking really good. Um, let me just tweak a couple of these shapes just a little bit. You know, endless tweaking. Anywhere where my eye looks at something and goes, I don't care for that. Um, so the top and the bottom halves, this side has, you know, like these dark, bold edges. And I really like those shapes. But then this side has these light, sort of feathered shapes. And I like both. Um, I think I'm just going to put the butterflies in and see how it looks. So I'm clearing a spot. Let's grab these wings and I've just got a pair of forceps here. I like forceps because they don't have a spring in them, which means they're very easy to control exactly the pressure that you want. So I'm just taking these wings and laying them out in the shape that they are. Otherwise, it's hard to remember, even for somebody that looks at butterflies all the time, hard to remember what the proportions are of how these things should be looking. Okay, there we go. So I think I'm gonna put the tiger swallowtail in the middle. Let's see, do I want it angling left, angling right? Hmm, I don't want it going straight. How do I want this positioned? I think I'm gonna angle it to the right. It's always hard, especially putting in the first wing, because it's hard to visualize how the butterfly, the whole butterfly is going to sit in there. And if you set a wing in the paint wrong, you can't just pick it up and start over because they're too, they're too delicate. But here we go. Just gently, gently set it down in the paint. Whew. There it is. We have a wing in the paint. Yeah, I think I like that placement. Let me stick this next wing in before I press it down, just, just to make sure. Certain sides of butterfly wings are stiffer than others, so sometimes it's hard to know where where to actually hold them. Okay, so I'm getting it lined up. There we go. Okay, that looks nice. Now we can just kind of gently press it down to make sure that the wing is fully contacting that paint, which is essentially the glue that holds it in place. Yeah, that looks great. Time for the top wings. Oh yeah, that's nice. I'm glad it doesn't touch that brown. I'm glad the wing kind of fits underneath that. Looks very natural. All right, last wing. Sometimes it's hard to get in the right location. So tricky. Okay, here we go. All right, let go. Come on. Oh no! Help! 
my, my forceps got stuck on the wing and so it's kind of crooked but I think by just lifting it with this palette knife a little bit I can kind of guide it to a better spot Whew. okay that looks better the paint went over the top edge of the wing just a little bit but not so much that you'd really notice it so that's that's good gonna do the same thing over here just to balance it out and try to make it look as symmetrical as possible okay yeah that looks great that way the spacing in between the top and the bottom wings on each side look right all right I'm gonna add the monarch here down on the bottom It's looking nice. It's overlapping the design just a little bit, but that's not bad. All right, yeah, that's looking great. Okay, up here at the top, I do think that this big kind of brown swoop, I think it's in the way. I don't think there's gonna be enough space for the moth, because that's just sticking out. So let me see if I can hmm, take that away. I really like it, but I don't think it's gonna work with the moth. I'm just scooping up the paint I don't want, adding a little bit more base, and then let me see if I can feather out what I have here, make it look a little bit more natural. Hmm, no, I don't like that either. Okay, so now we're taking away some more. <laughs> this is the game of how many times do you try to save something before you just say, no, I'm taking away the entire section and we'll blow out from here again. Okay, some more base coat. This is why it's good to have extra base coat when you're doing a Dutch pour. Blow it out. Oh, yeah. That looks much better. -y. Now it's, it's feathery and it's delicate, much more like the bottom side. So that's, that's good. Okay, so now I can add this one up here. This is a polyphemus moth. It's in the same family as Luna moths. The Saturnid family. I love the big eye spots they have on the bottoms of their wings. All right, so there we have it. We've got the beautiful Dutch painted design. The bodies, I paint those on afterwards. So we gotta wait until the paint is dry, but let me give you a close up. So I also added some antennae to the wet paint because I wanted to see the texture of those as well as the wings, but it looks amazing. So here is the fall butterfly painting. It's all dry. Um, and I wanted to show you what it looks like dry. So I actually, after I turned off the video, I forgot that I was going to be experimenting with putting real antennae into the paint. So after I put in the butterfly wings, then I took these antennae and just set them in and sort of guessed where the head would end. These ones are real moth antennae, <laughs> all the soft fuzzy ones. Anyway. So as you can see, I've painted the bodies in too. So sometimes I just sort of went in the cracks around the wings. Um, here, there was a little chip in the wing that I just painted black. And the wings had spread apart here. So I just made the body sort of fill that space. I'm really proud of this one. That's actually what a tiger swallowtail body looks like. It's black with the yellow striping. And then down here, with the monarch I painted black but with the monarch the um, the bottom wings actually they don't go over the top of the back so I painted over the edges of the wings you can kind of see there the texture where I just painted the body right over that and also the wings had kind of spread apart so I reinforced that black color and the brown 
just to make it look natural. Um, but it looks so cool when you can see the metallic shimmer of that uh, antique copper. I just love that. That's something that you can't you can't quite get the feel of when it's wet, um, but then when it's dry, and especially when it's varnished, it looks extra cool. So the next step for this is to spray varnish it. So I'm gonna let it dry another couple of days, and then I will show you how I spray varnish it. Hey there, it's time to varnish the butterfly painting. So I'm set up out in my garage, um, you wanna be in a well-ventilated space, um, obviously, if you're spraying. I'm using this Krylon triple thick clear glaze. Um, it costs four or five dollars a can, uh, and it provides a really nice, glossy, thick um, coating. As I've said, these butterflies, you could not brush a varnish onto this or it would rub all the color right off. Um, so I actually have two cans, just in case one of the nozzles gets clogged, um, I can finish up with the other can. So it's nice to have a backup there. So before you spray, prepare your workspace just to protect your floor or your table. And then just sort of dust off your painting. Obviously yeah. don't... Yeah. Um, obviously don't rub on the butterfly wings themselves, but you want to try to get off any dust or bits of dirt that may have gotten onto the painting um, in the drying and curing process. Okay, once that's all dry, then take your spray and give it a good shake. The directions say between 55 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit and use in low humidity. So, here we go. Okay, so I start by spraying the sides and then you spray the top and it says apply a full wet coat. So you really wanna put it on heavy and you want to do it from a place where you can see the light reflecting off of it that way you can tell if you're getting a really thick coat on it. Okay, here we go. Oops, get the top off. There we go. Okay, let's start by spraying the sides. You just wanna Put on enough to give it good coverage. Okay, and now the top. Um, so your butterflies may fade a little bit. That's to be expected um, just because when you put the spray on, butterfly wings tend to go kind of transparent. And that's just something that happens, but they are keeping most of their color, so that's good. Okay, so the directions on the can say um, for a porous surface, which a canvas is a porous surface, um, you can put on a second coat in about three minutes. Um, wait two to three minutes and apply a second coat, it says, and then let it dry for about 24 hours. So I do like to put a second coat on these just to make sure that it's a perfectly smooth surface and you don't have sort of places where, where it absorbs more. So I'm gonna wait just a couple minutes and then I'm gonna come back and do the exact same thing, but I won't make you watch that process. All right, 
that's how you spray it finished. And when it's all uh, sprayed, I'll give you a close up and then I'll show you when the varnish is all dry. I love how glossy this is and I love that you can see the texture of the butterfly wings even in the varnish. Thanks so much for joining me for this tutorial. Let me know if you end up making a mixed media painting with butterfly or moth wings yourself. I hope you come back to my channel and watch some of my other videos, and I will see you for the next one. Bye!